Welcome back to the IBD School Basics Series. In this episode, IBD School 102, we answer the question, what is Crohn's disease? And explain the different forms of inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD, is a disease of long-lasting or chronic inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. Inflammation is a result of activation of the immune system, and it generally includes five signs of active inflammation, warmth, redness, pain, swelling, and loss of function. In IBD, these symptoms happen in the gastrointestinal tract and cause symptoms in your belly. We refer to IBD as a chronic inflammatory disease because the immune system is abnormally activated and stays activated for months or years. The inflammation can quiet down or become quiescent for a while, but weeks, months, or years later, the inflammation can come back with a big flare of activity and symptoms. It is also chronic because the damage or distortion of the intestine lining is left behind when the intestine heals after a flare and can still be seen under a microscope. Crohn's disease causes inflammation throughout the entire thickness of the wall of the GI tract. This affects all of the layers of the wall. Because it goes across the whole wall, Crohn's is called a transmural disease. Crohn's disease can cause inflammation in any segment of the GI tract, from the mouth to the anus. The most common place for Crohn's disease to start is the terminal ileum the last part of the small intestine, just upstream of where the large and small intestines meet. This is one of the most narrow parts of the GI tract, which can cause problems later on. Crohn's disease is also segmental, which means that one part of the intestine can be affected, while segments of the intestine just upstream or just downstream of the affected segment appear completely healthy, even when small biopsy pieces are examined under a microscope. People with Crohn's disease can be affected in different locations in the GI tract. About half are affected in both colon and small intestine, about 30% in just the small intestine, and about 20% in just the colon. About 10% of these people are also affected further upstream, in the esophagus, stomach, or the beginning of the small intestine. The symptoms that usually have the most impact on patients with Crohn's disease are abdominal pain, tiredness, increased bowel movements, nausea, bloating, fevers, joint pains, loss of appetite, and weight loss. These fairly vague symptoms can make Crohn's disease hard to diagnose, and it is not uncommon to have symptoms for a few years before the correct diagnosis is made. Two other diagnoses that are not IBD are important to know about. One is acute infectious colitis or acute enteritis. These are due to inflammation of the colon or small intestine that lasts a short time, days or weeks, and then goes away. These are generally due to infections and don't leave any chronic damage behind afterward that can be seen under a microscope. Sometimes people with acute infections of the GI tract are thought to have IBD, but turn out to have just had a bad infection of part of the GI tract. Another diagnosis that is not IBD is IBS, or Irritable Bowel Syndrome. IBS can cause symptoms of pain, diarrhea, or constipation that can look like IBD, but there is no chronic inflammation and damage to the lining of the intestine. However, the abnormalities in IBS and the inflammation in IBD are treated very differently. That's it for this class, and thanks for watching. 